Good afternoon. Thank you for staying with us. It has been a long couple of days. I know that those of you who are still here, though, are the most interested in making Guam into the Pacific Tiger. Now, that does not say the people... <laughs> okay, good. That does not say that the people who have had to leave are less interested. In fact, uh, one of the gentlemen last night that talked to me was very disappointed that I was going to be speaking at the end, and it was kind of flattering because he said, oh, my God, I can't be there. I'm so disappointed. And I thought, gee, he didn't even know what I was going to talk about. This is good. <laughs> I, I have been in economic development for 15 years. I have been a certified economic developer for 10 years. And for those of you who are on a... Uh, unfamiliar with the term, we, we refer to it as a CECD, and it is a, a certification that can only be earned after you've already been in economic development for five years, which is probably why a lot of people don't go through certification, because they get to the point of having worked in the industry for five years, and they consider themselves to already be pretty knowledgeable. So should they spend twelve, fifteen thousand dollars and a lot of time and effort to become certified. It is a, it, it's a question that many people answer with no. It is difficult, very difficult. Um, I now am working with testing people in economic development and we have uh, generally, well, this time we had um, 42 people who wrote the exam and 14 who passed. And that is the norm. It is difficult. However, it's also a wonderful sense of achievement, and I am one of those people who never stop learning. Uh, I actually have uh, done several things. I began as a community volunteer, and those of you out there who devote well over 40 hours a week to your community without being paid, my hat's off to you. I did that for a long time, and it is extremely satisfaction oriented. Uh, we always used to joke that the people, who, the people who did the best job as volunteers were rewarded with a bigger job. And that's really the way it is. That's, uh, that's all you get as a volunteer. You get more and more responsibility. So I really admire the people who are working for your community, and I know there are many. After having done that for a long time, I went into politics because I both wanted and needed to make some money. And I felt I needed to make a difference in my community. And I just happened to uh, get very fortunate. And I worked for someone who some people love, some people don't, Senator John McCain. I was his finance director, and we remain good friends. Then I worked for Governor Symington as his finance director. And in between, I worked in the office of the governor. So that's how I began my career in economic development, because as part of the cabinet uh, in the governor's office, I found out that they were working on what was called G-Speed, the governor's strategic plan for economic development. And I used to go into those meetings and think, we have never done this. We as a state have never sat down and figured out what we want to be as an economy and how we were going to get there. I was amazed. Well, Arizona still struggles with it. We have basically gutted our Arizona Department of Commerce, which is the agency I went to work for after that for four years. And that's when I went through the certification process, uh, just following that when I worked for the city of Goodyear. Then I worked after the city of Goodyear doing glitzy economic development, was, which was the attraction of high-end retail. And that is fun. You go to the conferences where all the greatest funnest people could be. Everything is glitz, and it's a magnificent experience. But it wasn't really making a difference in people's lives. Yes, it's nice for a community to get all the best stores, but is that what people really need? So I felt this calling when I, and I was recruited to Yuma, Arizona. Yuma is in the interesting position of being south of California and west of Mexico. Now think about that for a minute. It is just kind of tucked around and it's a, almost a forgotten community and yet the population is the size of Guam. Uh, actually a little over. 
So I went there and really worked at getting real jobs for people. We were very successful. We totally transformed an organization that was not getting anywhere after 20 years of being in existence. And there were people who lined up on the streets the night before and camped out in order to get the wonderful jobs that we were able to bring in as a result of importing good big companies and having a wonderful industrial park that they were happy to come to. It was great. It was really a wonderful feeling of what economic development is. By the way, the difference between business development and economic development is only in the client. A business development person, which is, I've also done briefly, represents a corporation. You work to improve the bottom line of that corporation. An economic developer works to improve the community. That's why economic developers always work for public or public-private organizations. They're called EDOs, economic development organizations. And I love what I do. I love the challenge of helping a community, which I hope I'm going to do now in Eloy. This is a new organization. It has been existence for one year, and I've been there for, excuse me, for six months. <coughs> so we all see, but I am, <coughs> excuse me, looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gail. Now we'll hear from uh, Mr. Joe Diego. Thank you, Dr. Enriquez, for inviting me to be part of this panel. Uh, many of you are probably wondering what the United States Department of Agriculture has to do with economic development. Uh, I'm not here to teach you how to catch brown tree snakes and turn it into some kind of finished product to, to make belts, maybe. I, I know we had a sweep snake several years ago who can make the best dish, who can catch the, the largest snake. No, that's absolutely nothing uh, has, has to do. As a matter of fact, we don't have anything to do with agriculture. We're actually called rural development. We went through an identity crisis in the in the mid-90s, we were actually more famously known as Farmers Home Administration. Uh, then we were Rural Economic and Community Development there for about three or four years, and then we finally settled on Rural Development. So I'm here to tell you what Rural Development is all about. USDA Rural Development's mission is to increase economic opportunity and improve the quality of life for rural residents. We are essentially a venture capitalist for rural areas, and it doesn't get any more rural than the island of Guam. RD has invested nearly $111 billion since 2001 for equity and technical assistance to finance and foster growth in home ownership, business development, and critical community and technology infrastructure. In Guam alone during that same time period, uh, rural development has invested over $300 million in, under these same categories. More than 2 million jobs have been created or saved through these investments. Rural development programs are delivered through our utilities program which addresses the need for basic services such as clean running water, sewers and waste disposal, electricity and telecommunications, including telemedicine. Housing programs address the need for single family and multifamily housing, as well as health facilities, fire, police stations, first responder and other community facilities. And our business programs provide help to rural areas that need to develop new job opportunities, allowing businesses and cooperatives to remain viable in a changing economy. So you can see that um, uh, you know, we have about uh, over 53 different types of loan, loan guarantees and grants that uh, are essentially there to, to help build communities from the ground up. We're not necessarily building a community from the ground up, but it's a different type of growth we're experiencing. So um, you know, we're glad that uh, you know, as one federal agency uh, and our counterpart here, that SBA, that we are stepping up uh, you know, to, to kind of help with this uh, build up in the community. And um, uh, I guess I'll, I'll talk a little more about other things that we can provide for the community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. And now we will hear from Mr. Ken Lujan. Well, thank you again for having me here. You probably heard a little bit of dialogue that I had early this morning. But uh, I guess the reason why I'm here is because I've been with the SBA for about 24 years, which for most people, some of you probably be younger than 24 years out there. But uh, for the most part, SBA has been an advocate, again, uh, for small businesses uh, throughout the country. Uh, my, my office currently serves Guam, 